Good morning, everyone. I hope I'm audible to you. Could just type a yes or no. Am I audible to you and the screen is visible to you? Yeah, great. So let's continue with the last example, okay, which we rushed through it. So let's go that in detail. So what I have over here is a class. Okay, let's call it as test. It has got a function called as FUNC and it is throwing two exception, arithmetic exception and array index out of bound exception. This is just an indicating that it is going to throw this exception. Okay, these exceptions are not caught over here. These exceptions are not caught over here. These exceptions are monitored in this try catch block over here in the main. So what is my basic idea is that the processing should be done in the function and the exception handling should be caught over here in the main. So I have a for loop over here. I have a try block. In the try block, I'm making a call to the function. It is getting two parameters A and B. These two parameters parameters are accepted over here okay these two parameters are accepted over here using a next state they are passed over here to this particular function clear now in case we enter the value as 1 and 0 then what will happen is this 10 will be divided by 1 because i have passed the values 1 and 0 so 10 and 1 so this won't give any error B value is 0. So at the 0th position, what I have? I have 1. So it won't give me any error. In the next run, in the next run, assume that my next two entries are my next two entries are 10 and 4. So when you divide 10 by 10, what should happen? They shouldn't flag any error. But here you have typed 4 and we do not have any fourth index. So what will happen? It will give me an error. In the third case, let's assume I have entered 0 and 1. Or you enter 0 and 4. 10 upon 0 will give me an exception. So it won't execute this two statement. It will come here and give me the arithmetic exception. Arithmetic exception. So this was the program we... <coughs> went through it yesterday so i want you to test it with the different different test cases and if you have any doubts you are free to raise it over here kindly go through this example run it with the different different test cases you have to enter three set of inputs because you're going to run it three times so you have to enter six values two values on a single line separated by the space so kindly run it and I'm going to wait for two minutes for you to tell me whether there is an exception or not.
Okay, this is one of the set of the values which is giving over here. Okay. So this program illustrated how you can throw the logic in a function and that function can basically tell that these are the exception being thrown so that user is aware that this program is handling this particular exception. The exception handling mechanism, either you can write it over here in this particular function or you can write it in this particular try catch block. And this is the end of the main and this is the end of the program. Now what I want you to do is I want you to write a try catch mechanism over here in the function. I want you to write a try catch mechanism over here in this particular function. I want you to write a try catch block which can handle arithmetic exception and array index out of bound exception. So kindly complete the code. I'll give you my original code. Okay, and I told you what to do. I don't want try catch mechanism in the main. I want try catch mechanism in the function. Kindly do it and show it to me. I'm waiting for you to write a code in which the try catch mechanism is written in a function, it is not written in the main. So remove the try from here. Remove this block from here. For loop ends over here. Main ends over here. And the class ends over here. So here you write the try catch block. So this particular code should have a try catch. 
right now if i run this code see what happens over here this will be executed perfectly fine for this particular case what will happen there will be arithmetic exception you are just indicating that it is going to throw an arithmetic exception you are not catching it so you need to have a tie catch block over here this is just giving the information to the user that yes this might throw arithmetic and array index out of bound exception depending upon the value of a and b received over here but you need to handle it we need a try catch block over here Okay, let's continue with user defined exception. Let's continue with user defined exception. Right? In case of user defined exception, what is happening is something like this. There is a main function. There is a main class. Okay. I have kept the main in the same class. You could have kept it in some other class also. Okay. What I'm doing is. I'm accepting the weight over here. I'm accepting the weight, okay, by making a call to ob dot valid weight. Now you may ask, what is ob? Ob is an object of the main class, okay. There is a function called as valid weight, which is throwing the weight limit exceeded, which is throwing the weight limit exceeded. So two things over here. Point number one, there are two classes over here. There is a class main and there is a weight limit exceeded class, okay. So let me show this. Di diagrammatically for you. So I have a class A. Okay. And there is a class B which is handling the exception, which is handling the exception. So what we normally do is this class, which is going to handle the user defined exception. Okay. This particular class should extends exception. Here yeah? it should extend the exception. Okay. This particular class is going to have a function, let's call it as f. Okay. And it also has got a main. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an object of this particular class. Let's call it as OB. Let's call it as OB. Okay. And it is going to make a call to which particular function? F function. Now, in this F function, in this F function, what I do is I want to test certain condition and that condition will be handling the user defined exception. What could be that particular condition? That condition could be, let's assume in this particular program, if the weight is greater than 100, okay, then you display a message, you need to hit the gym or something like that. You need to have the daily routine, something like this. Okay, some message should be displayed. If it is less than or equal to 100, then what should happen? Some normal message should be displayed. But this particular task of checking the weight of the user, whether it is greater than 100 or not, is dumped to some class which is going to extend the exception and which is going to have the particular function, which is going to have a particular function. Clear? Understood? 
So I am going to have a class which is going to have a function, which is going to have a main class, which is going to create an object of this particular class, which is OB. And then I'm going to make a call to the F and which is going to throw some exception. Okay. This particular class should extend the exception and here some exception handling code should be there. So here this particular function should display that I'm going to make a call to this particular function, which is going to handle the user defined exception. Now, if you come back to the code over here, okay, kindly pay attention over here. As I explained, there is going to be a main class. There is going to be a function called as valid way. In the main function, what I'm doing, I'm making a call to this particular main class and creating an object of it. I'm creating an object of a scanner class and for i is equal to 0, i less than 2, i plus plus, what I do, I write a try catch mechanism over here. I write a try catch mechanism. Using this particular object, I'm going to make a call to the valid weight. I'm going to make a call to the valid weight. In the valid weight, what I'm going to do, I'm going to basically pass certain value. Okay? Is going to pass certain value. Let's assume that I have entered 100. I have entered 100. Okay? So, this particular valid weight is over here in this particular main function. And this particular function is going to throw which particular exception? Weight limit exceeded exception. Okay. Now the question is, what is this weight limited ex exceeded? Is this provided by Java or is it a user defined exception? It's a user defined exception. How you know it? Because we have written class weight limit exceeded extends exception. It extends the exception. Okay. What I do over here, I say this weight limit exceeded is a constructor which is going to take one parameter. What is that parameter? The parameter which I have entered over here. Let's assume I have entered 100. I have entered 100 over there. Okay. Now here I have written if the weight is greater than 15, throw new weight limit exceeded 15. What I have entered? I have entered 100. So came over here. Is 100 greater than 15? Yes. So you have to throw a new instance of this particular class, which is this one, and you have to pass a parameter. So it will make a call to this parameterized constructor. Okay, what is the weight? It is 100. X is 100. It should display mat.absolute 15 minus 100. 15 minus 100. Okay, 15 minus 100. Are you with me? So let's run this for the different, different instance. Let's assume I entered 100, I entered 120, and I entered 50. Okay. What I have done, I have entered three inputs. Why three inputs? Because it is going to declare a scanner object of the scanner class, and it is then make, going to accept the data from here. For that, I have imported the util. Okay. And now see what happens over here. I have said 100. 1120 okay so when i enter this for each particular entry let's say, assume we have entered 100 so it comes over here data entered is 100 you are making a call to the valid weight control came to valid weight weight received is 100 is it greater than 15 yes so what should happen it says throw new weight limit exceeded weight what is the weight we have entered it is 100 so came over here came over here, okay, to this particular class. See, kindly note, I'm using the keyword throw new. That means we need to create an instance of this. Throw new weight limit exceeded weight. Came over here. It made a call to the parameterized constructor. What is the weight we are passing? We are passing the weight as 100. Came over here. Mat.absolute 15 minus x over here. Yes or no? So what happened over here? It took the absolute value. 85 kg weight limit exceeded. It displayed over here. It displayed over here. Yes or no? Is it clear? Yes, no. Now, in the next case, in the next case, I entered 1120. In the next case, I entered 1120. Okay. So, again, what happened? It came over here. It came over here. Okay. There is a weight limited ex exceeded over here. So, here, what is the weight over here? 1120. Okay. So, you are th throwing new weight limit exceeded weight over here, right? And it is basically 
taking this value, finding the absolute of it, and it is displaying 1104. In the third case, interestingly, we have entered 50. We have entered 50. So what happens is, comes over here, is a weight greater than 50? Yes. So what should happen in this case? Control comes over here, 15, 50 min 15 minus 50, 35 kg. Is that being displayed over here? Yes or no? Let's check it. The third one will be ignored because we have said only 0 and 2. We have said 0 and 2 over here. Okay. Clear? Why we are getting weight limit exceeded? For a very simple reason, this particular case, weight limit exceeded will be populated in this particular E and that particular SOP will be displayed. If I enter, let's take a case of uh, 100 and let's take a case of uh, greater than 15. No, let's enter 15. Pay attention now. Again, what is the first case? 100. So it came over here. Is 100 greater than 15? Yes. So you have thrown the exception. We use a new. Why we need to use a new? Because we need to create an object of this. This object is extending an exception because here we have defined a user defined logic which is supposed to get the exception from here. What is the value? It is 15. Is 15 greater than 15? No. So what should happen? It should come here. You are ready to fly. It should be there in the next case. But in case of 100, what will happen? It will come here. It will do this necessary calculation that throw new weight limit exceeded. So this is the weight limit exceeded. So it should come in the catch block. What is E over here? E is nothing but the name of the class, which is weight limit exceeded. So what I do normally out over here is whatever condition the user has given you, according to that, we should make a call and create an instance of this particular class by saying throw new. When I say throw new, you are creating an anonymous object, okay, because you are not said weight class exceeded obj equal to new weight class exceeded. No, I'm simply saying create new weight limit exceeded. Why this was new is required because I need to execute this particular constructor and I need to populate it using an exception, which comes over here. If you look over here, weight limit exceeded is this particular exception. Is this particular exception. If I do not do it, then what will happen? You will not be in a position to create the class. Since you're not in a position to create a class, it won't get this particular exception. Since it won't get an exception, what will happen? You won't come over here. Is it clear? See, again, pay attention. I guess you're not getting it. Design a class, extend the exception, extend the exception over here. Let's let's do one thing. Let's try to analyze it with this example. Let's have a class called as A. Let's have the marks. Okay. Uh, in the main method, in the main method, create an object of this particular class, A class. Okay. And then what I should do, I should make a call to the function. Let's call it, it as F. This obj.f function should accept the value for marks. Okay. Now, once you accepted the marks, what you should do? You should check if it is greater than 50 or if it is less than 0, what you should do? You should throw. What you should throw? You should throw this particular class. Class invalid exception extends exception. Okay, and have the invalid marks exception, sorry. 
and have a constructor invalid marks exception constructor okay what it is receiving it marks display the marks display the marks in this particular class what you are going to do you are going to try and catch what you are going to catch this particular exception what it is invalid marks exception okay what you want to throw uh, you want to throw some message okay invalid marks okay uh, so you do one thing it should go to the constructor in the constructor you should populate it so this particular invalid marks will come here in this particular catch which is e and when you say sop e what it should display it should display this message if this message is marks can't be greater than 50 and less than zero this particular message will come over here why it comes over here because of this particular exception are you getting it I hope now you have understood what is the purpose of E. The E is supposed to be populated with whatever message you are going to write over here. And to populate this, we should have this mechanism of this class extending the exception. I'll make it still simple. Wait. Make it, Instead of getting into this complicated example, I will make it very, very simple where it is throwing the exception. Mm, let's just give me a moment. Okay, pay attention over here. I will take a very, very simple example. Okay. Let's not go into this particular user defined exception. Let's concentrate on this. I have got a class called as exception demo, which has got a compute function. I'm making a call to the compute function in the try catch block. In the try catch block. Okay. So point number one is you write a class, class my exception extends the exception. Okay. This particular try catch block will have a catch, will have a catch. Now I'm coming to the previous example again. Okay, I'll come to this first. Let me explain this. In this example, what I'm doing, I'm writing my exception E over here. So the main concept, main concern is how this is going to get populated and I are going to display it. Okay, so let's have a class called as exception demo. Let's have a compute function which is throwing my exception. What is my exception? It's a class which is extending the exception. It's a class which is extending the exception. Okay, this is a meaningful message saying that you have make a, made a call to this. And here I'm saying if this A is greater than 10, in the first case it is not, it will come here and display normal exit. In the second case it is 20. So in this case it will be true. I'm saying throw new my exception. And what is the value I'm passing A? What is the value of A? It is 20. Now let's expand this. Now what happens over here is you said over here, if this is true, throw new my exception A. Throw new my exception A. So what is happening in this case? It is coming over here. This is extending the exception. In the constructor, what is the value we are getting? We are getting A. We are getting A. Okay. And here I am saying detail is equal to A. Detail is equal to E. Okay. Now let's come back over here. Now let's come back over here. And I have got 
something like catch my exception e okay e is a variable of the my exception and i am saying sop caught e sop caught e clear understood now let me run this by path by removing the standard input because we do not need it we are passing with compute one and compute two so when i run this Let's try to understand this. Call compute one. Let's see how we get it. So we are saying try compute one. Control comes here. Value is one. Throws my exception. Do I have a exception handling over here? No. I'm simply saying throw. Okay. Next is call compute with the value of a, which is one. Is a greater than ten? No. One is not greater than ten. So this won't be executed. Normal exit. So what should be the next output? Normal exit. Fine. Then control comes back because it's in the try catch block. Compute twenty. What is a twenty? Is it throwing my exception? Yes. Call compute twenty. Yes, we got call compute twenty. Okay. Is a greater than ten? Yes, a is greater than ten. So what should happen? You should say throw new my exception a. Now pay attention carefully. What I'm doing over here is I'm saying new my exception and I'm creating an anonymous object of which class my exception class. Okay. And I'm passing a value called as a. So this particular saying that new my exception, new my exception with the value of a. So what should happen? It should go to constructor. It should go to the constructor. Okay. In the constructor, what we have? We have a. Yes or no? What is the value? Twenty. A is twenty. Detail is twenty. Comes here and assigns the value twenty to detail. Now my big headache is. When is this particular two string called? When is this method two string called? When is this two string called? Yes, two students have given it correctly. No, 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 no. No, you haven't got it. This only one or two students have got it. Pay attention now, carefully. Okay. Let's drop this. Pay attention now carefully. Forget about this one line. Forget about this one line. There is a class called as exception demo. Okay, there is a class called as exception demo. It has got a compute function. It has got a compute function. the condition i am giving to you is something like this if the value which we are passing is greater than 10 it should throw some user defined exception it should throw some user defined exception so for that what i do is i write class my exception extends exception opening bracket closing bracket that's it i have not written anything i have not written anything class my class extends exception opening bracket closing bracket now i come to the compute function and here i say throws my exception indicating that this particular function is going to throw this particular exception my exception what is this my exception user defined how you know it because i say class my exception extends the exception this is a useful message if you want you can display it i am here just to display to tell you that it is coming in this otherwise it is not required so we could remove it 
but my program should definitely handle this two lines. What is this two lines? If A is greater than 10, then you should throw an object of the my exception. So why you should throw an object of the my exception? Because it's a class. It's a class over here. Yes or no? And this class is extending the exception. What is the purpose of saying throw new my exception? Because when I say throw new, what will happen? It will make a call to the two string. It will make a call to the two string and it will get the value of detail from here. It will get the value of detail from here. Now, what is the idea over here is when I say throw new my exception A, this A is a value. Okay, this A is a value received over here. So, in this case, let's assume I have entered the value as 11. So, this particular compute 11 comes over here to this function. It says this is throwing my exception. My exception is extending the exception. So, this won't grumble. This will be perfectly fine. When I say a greater than 10, value is 11, it will say throw new my exception. Two things have happened now. It created an object, we call it as anonymous object. So control came here, value is a, which is 11. 11 was assigned to detail. So this detail got populated with 11. And the two string was called, and the two string was called. What is the job of the two string? The two string is supposed to return this particular string value. And it says, my exception and the value of detail. What is detail? 11. How do you know it is 11? Because A was assigned to detail. Now what happened was, if you look over here, it should come to my exception E and it should display caught E. Now what is this E? E is nothing but a reference variable of my exception. And when you, you know that whenever an object is created, there is something called as a two string is created. So this two string job is to populate this E. This two string is to populate E. So what did two string give me? It returned my exceptions. Are you getting my exception? Yes. Are you getting this value of A detail in the square bracket, which is 11 in the square bracket, which is 11. And what is this code? This code is displayed over here. Is it clear now? Is it clear? I'm giving this code to you and I'm going to wait for two minutes. If you have any doubts, kindly raise it. Someone said something about the E. E is a reference, E is a reference variable, E is a reference variable of my exception. Okay. So what happens is since this is a variable of the my exception, my exception, whenever you create an object of it, it will make a call to the two string. That means whenever I'm displaying an object, two string should be called. That's why this E will have this particular message. Do we need to do it in the user defined uh, user defined exception? No, because it is already predefined. It's already predefined. Kindly go through it if you have any doubts. Kindly raise it. Yeah. Yes, then man.
now i will give you a shorter shorter another way to handle this exception okay now you decide which one to use pay attention of carefully there is a class called as example one there is a main function the main function is creating an object of the example one in the try block i say obj dot product check 60 product check is a function product check is a function it's not a static function that's why i need to create it an object of it so what i did i created an object and made a call to product check what is the weight 60 what it is saying throw invalid product exception now here what is happening there is something called as an invalid product exception extending an exception okay until now we have thrown integer here i am saying throw new invalid product exception product invalid i pass this particular string as product invalid if the weight is less than 100 clear then what i am doing over here i said catch invalid product exception ex SOP caught the exception and ex dot get message. Instead of get message, you could simply say ex. Or we could say e. Here, yeah. let's try to understand this now. Now here what I did, I simplified the code. I simplified the code. If the weight is less than 100, throw new invalid product exception, product invalid. Again, creating an object of the invalid product exception. So it will go in the constructor. So it will go in the constructor. But in the constructor, what I do, I make a call to the super. Now, what is the super? Super is this exception. What it has, it has got a that exception handling variable called as E. So that E is populated with S. You will ask, what is S? whatever you have thrown over here, what it was, product invalid. So product invalid came over here. <coughs> I said super, went into the exception. That S is passed over there. So in my try catch, this particular variable EX, or if you want comfortably in here, just write E. This particular E should now display this particular product invalid. Let's run this. And let's try to understand this. Example one obj equal to new example one created an object in the try catch obj dot product check 60. Is 60 less than 100? Yes. Throw new invalid product exception product invalid. Create an object of this invalid product exception. Pass the string product invalid came over here. And then I'm saying super s. So super S is populating this exception E and what it is, whatever you pass over here, product invalid. In the catch block, I write an E as a variable of this particular class, which is invalid product exception. And I display caught the exception, which is this particular message. And then I write E, what is E? Product invalid. Is this clear to you? A much simpler way to handle the exception handling.
whenever you display an object what happens is it displays it makes a call to the to string get message e print track trace should be picking up the information from there is it clear if you are wondering how this is getting populated this is getting populated because of this particular trick super s and s is nothing but received from here and this s is populating this particular exception either you can use e message in the debugging in the debugging we should use print stack trace in the production you shouldn't use you should simply say e because of the visual because of the call super s what should super do super should go to the exception and populate e with this particular message super should go to the ex since our class extend the exception what it should do it should populate e think that you are not using the user defined exception you are using the predefined exception arithmetic exception so when the arithmetic exception occurs what happens based on the condition divided by 0 that is message is automatically in e so how we got it we got it because that exception was populated with that particular arithmetic exception e now we are trying to mimic that same feature by using something called as a super if you do not want to use a super then in this what we do is you assign that value of s to two string to a variable if you do not write anything if you do not write super then see what happens over here in this case what happened it caught the exception and by default what is the name of the class invalid product exception this was displayed e will not get populated because you are not written super s by default e will pick up the class name which is extending the exception questions 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 if you have kindly raise let's change this let's make it as abc now what should happen abc should come to s s should be passing abc abc should go to exception and it should populate this particular e
what you are supposed to do you are supposed to design a class called as my exception it should have a data member called as marks integer it should have a function called as except in the main function create an object of this particular class my exception make a call to the except function except function should accept the value clear this except function should throw the invalid mark exception if the marks is less than 0 or greater than 50 and the message should be throws invalid marks this invalid space marks should be used in the parameterized constructor in the constructor what you are going to do you are going to use super s right so here you will be using a try catch mechanism to handle this user defined exception called as invalid marks and you are going to throw, show me this particular message saying invalid marks in the try catch you can use whichever approach you want but i want that complete solution from your side so whatever code i have given make the changes and paste the solution in the chat window this activity should take 5 to 6 minutes take your time but you should get this example
uh, let's see invalid marks extends exception you said int a it got populated why is why int a because i told you message should be invalid marks a string if a less than throw invalid marks uh, do not show the marks show the message otherwise valid marks change the super over here See what will happen if I do something like this. This A will be taken as an integer and it, you will be displaying the marks. You won't be displaying the exception. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So kindly change the message. Your message should be helpful to the user. Okay, Nishkars noted. Hmm, looks like students are struggling with it. So this is the solution provided by Nishkars. I'm pasting it in the chat window for everyone. Next. Let's have a class called as driving license. It has got a data member called as intage. Again, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to have an accept function. Okay, in this accept function, the condition should be if age is greater than 18, valid license, sorry, it should be, if age is less than 18, it should throw class 
invalid age extends exception you will have a constructor in the constructor you will receive a string and you know what to do in this particular constructor okay if age is less than 18 throw new this particular invalid age and not valid age entered this is the message i want to pass to this particular string which is going to be populated in the e and have a try catch mechanism over here and have a try catch mechanism over here kindly do it kindly design a driving license class which will have a data member age you're going to have an accept function in that you will say if age is less than 18 throw new invalid age sorry not a valid age entered design a class called as invalid age it should extend exception and you know what to do yeah you, you will have to use a super s is the question clear to you Is the question clear to you? Kindly say yes, no. So I shown two method to use a my exception. One is using a two string, and another is using a much simpler mechanism called as super.
Let's see how many solutions I have got. One solution I have got from Rishi Sharma. Class invalid age extends exception. Super classmate driving license throws inval invalid age. That's the name of the class. Okay. If it is less than throw new invalid age entered. Public statement driving license catch. Okay, good. Let's see now through solution invalid age extends exception public invalid age. String is super class DL accept age invalid. Okay. Good. So two solution from the class of 201 participants. One moment, let me take the call. Most of you have got comfortable with the usage, usage of the super. Using super, you are in a position to write the code. That's perfectly fine. Is my screen visible to you? Is my Google Drive screen visible to you? So kindly pay attention. 
All my class notes are over here. Okay, core Java master class. Okay, this is my Google Drive for the first year, second year, and third year. And you must be you must be having this particular core Java master class visible to you. So there are two folders over here: class notes and video lecture. So video lectures is uploaded till first of sorry 31st of march till yesterday all the lectures are over here and my class notes are over here exception handling complete document has been uploaded is it clear so you can refer to this particular folder and access the class notes as well as the video lectures Tomorrow, what uh, tomorrow you have got any web application, advanced web development exam, FA. What are the timings? Ten to eleven. Okay. So can I take the class at 11.30 tomorrow? 11.30 to So you have an exam from 10 to 11. Yes, every day is a good Friday. Every day should be good Friday. See, what I want to do is I want to take a Java in detail and that is only possible when you give me more number of days. So that you should be very, very comfortable in the most, uh, what I can say, important topic that is data structure, which will be the next topic which will be learning after Java is over in the next sem. So I want to make you strong in Python and Java. So for that, kindly allow me to take the class at 11.30. Anyway, what I will do at 11.30 we'll meet. Okay, unless and until you have some problems in the exam. Okay. So tomorrow's class will be at 11.30. 11.30 to, let's take it till 12.15 or 12.30 max. Only for tomorrow. Okay, that will be the... Uh, okay, no problem. Uh, ECE class is held or not? Just give me a moment. Let me coordinate that for you.
when is your next class when is your next class Attention. Morning class will be from 9 to 9.45. Okay, mass people and electronics people will take from 9 to 9.45. 10 to, uh, 10 to 11 will be your exam. Okay, T 10 to 11. My class will be only for half an hour, 11.30 to 12. That's it. And the normal classes will be there. Okay, tomorrow's morning class will be from 9 to 9.45. As far as the drive is concerned, the drive... You can go to the mail and access it because there is no link as such. You have this drive is shared with you with the Chitkara University email ID only. So log into your Chitkara University email ID. You can go to that particular drive and you can access it. Clear? So tomorrow morning class 9 to 9.45. Yeah, this drive is shared. Like how we do it for Python. Similarly, we have done it for Java. Right in the beginning, we have shared it only from Chikara University email ID. So there you can access this. So again, I'm repeating morning class 9 to 9.45, 10 to 11 exam, 11.30 to 12, half an hour class only for me, my class, 1 o'clock regular class. Clear? Okay, thank you very much. All the best for tomorrow's exam. Okay. Our FA will be there not in this week our fa will be most probably in the next week or after that so i will announce the date on saturday or i will mail the date on fifth thank you very much okay end of the class